Stop your mind too comfy so you already see it's your man too. Like I say, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. So before my tomorrow doesn't exist, I want to tell y'all something about a motherfucker that y'all think that I have fucking animosity for or whatever and blah, blah, blah. But it's far from the truth. And what you should do is thank this motherfucker because I'm going to take you back to a time of history, right? Where it could have went this way or it could have went that way. And because of this man and his ingenuity to inject the true form of hip-hop into this shit that the fucking industry was trying to take over, right? See, once upon a time, hip-hop then went through the dances, it then went through the this, it then went through the that, and it got, you know how you go to the roller coaster and it ain't got enough to get over the top? Well, hip-hop didn't have enough to get over the top at this point. You want to know, I'm going to tell you who fucking took hip-hop over that point. And fucking let the shit escalate to what it is. Y'all say I don't like them. KRS-One. If not for KRS-One. Interjecting all the gladiator fucking things that hip hop and the culture was fucking built on. Into this industry. It may not be where it is. Because like I said... At one time, we had all the dance, and we had all the gimmicks that hip-hop could fucking come up with to make the fucking world interested. And that shit was like, oh, it ain't making over the top. We ain't making over the top. And then here come this motherfucker, Chris. The bridge is over. The bridge is over. Yeah, I was on this roller coaster right here, coming to the top. I was on that shit. And here come this nigga, Chris. That nigga said the bridge is over. I jumped off that motherfucker and met that nigga at the top. And guess what it did for hip hop? Changed the whole fucking game. But if you weren't there and you're not a historian of this shit, all you have to do is listen to what I'm saying. Fuck your magazine, niggas, and any nigga that tries to dispute what I said, nigga. Only thing I can tell them motherfuckers is, nigga, was you there? Show me, motherfucker, when I was in the studio with Rock and tell me what happened. Or when me and Chris was on motherfucking tours doing what the fuck we do. If you wasn't there, my nigga, you can't tell me what the fuck. But now I'm telling you what the fuck. And so... All of you people that think that motherfucker, y'all know my character, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, MC Shan is a character, and I play that character, and that character is supposed to be against KRS-One all motherfucking day. Me, Sean Mokey, I love Chris as my brother. We done went through so many things that y'all could never fucking even fathom. To bring hip-hop to the point where niggas are still getting money. See, y'all niggas will have a beef, right? This week, and one of y'all niggas will kill each other. And there goes the motherfucking money. Man, Chris is in this shit 30 fucking years and rocking. And even at the height of our motherfucking battle, we can be or whatever the fuck the world wanted to call it. We could be on the same motherfucking stage... Not an incident would happen, but I could tell you what would happen. Me and him would be me, the Juice Crew, and BDP. We were the only New York motherfuckers in the middle of two below motherfucking Mississippi, right? And so we had each other's back as if we brothers. Was well, no different. We had each other's back. There's a story. That I'm not going to tell right now just to make it pertinent. Chris may not remember. But motherfucker. I was a real nigga on that story nigga. Because it might not be the way it is today. If I didn't let y'all out of that hotel. On my bus. And them folks chased me to the airport. And me standing in the window talking about yo what up short. And they say oh shit that ain't Chris bus. Don't fly on that shit. 
It's a real story. But if I was a suck nigga and I didn't say nothing when shorty, whatever it was, nigga. But I love you. And if not for this nigga Chris, for real, for real, on some real no motherfucking ego, no motherfucking ooh, I'm the man. You motherfuckers might not be in seeing hip-hop for what it is. And although y'all took what we did and y'all made it a negative form where y'all fucking started killing each other over words that you were saying on a fucking piece of plastic that's making other people rich. It's not our fault. Y'all should have kept looking at us and seeing for what the fuck we are. Because here we are 30 years from now. And right now it's the 50th anniversary, right? And so for any of these 50th anniversary shows that we got going on. If I'm on the same fucking bill with Chris. I would be fucking honored. If when I sung the bridge. As I've done for you, nigga. Don't play, motherfucker. You have sung South Bronx and I've been your fucking hype man several fucking times. Don't fucking play with me. <laughs> I would only be honored that at the 50th anniversary of hip hop, that my brother stand next to me and say, The brother, brother, bridge. The brother, brother, bridge. That's the plug. Hold on. Yo, I'm coming outside right now, nigga. <laughs> you heard me? I said I'm coming outside right now. You probably ain't even in the fucking driveway. Alright, I'm coming right now. Let me get off my live, yo. Bye. <laughs> I gotta go pick up my pack. As if you see, this motherfucker empty as fuck, both of them. <laughs> but in the end of the day, I salute you, Chris. As much shit as I talk, these people don't know that when I walk in the building, the only thing that you can say is, oh my God, here this motherfucker come. Because I'm like the older little brother that you can't say shit about. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hell fuck. That's all a motherfucker could say. When he hear me, I'll kick open the door when the nigga doing an interview. Where they telling everybody else, you can't go in there. Fucking the teacher's in there. So what? Uh, let me teach him. <laughs> And we've done it several times. And so, like I said, any 50th anniversary show, I would love for you to graciate my stage. And I would love to graciate if that, if the song that, if you do The Bridge Is Over. Matter of fact, I don't give a fuck what you do. Whatever you do, motherfucker, I'm near supporting that shit. So, all I'm asking, tell your motherfucking little goons. If Shizzle come toward the stage, let that nigga go. Because it ain't about no shit. That's my brother, nigga. Move. Y'all niggas will get fired fucking with that nigga. Alright, Chris? So make sure. I don't give a fuck what song you sing. Because you got a lot of hits. And the bridge is over. Well, I'm only singing one song. So it only will be right for you to sing that shit, nickel. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So one time for your mind, two time for your soul. It's your man Shizzle. Like I said, I gotta get off of here. My plug in the yard. I gotta go get my fucking pack. Appreciate you. Bye.